if we go back to looking at our triangle, we have a right triangle, and we can label the sides in terms of this, right? And that's what we learned in geometry, and then we also started this chapter with that. Then what we started doing is we started talking about throwing in an xy axis. Hmm, okay. If you throw in an xy axis, then if we could say like here is a coordinate point, then we said this value was your x, and this value was like your y to give you this coordinate point x comma y. Correct? Yes? And then we also even like to further some things. We even looked in this as I was saying, well, why don't we throw this on a, like a unit circle where the hypotenuse has a length of 1, right? Or this distance of this triangle has a length of 1. Then if we wanted to find the sine and cosine of this, the sine would be opposite over hypotenuse. Well, y over 1 is really is equal to sine, right? Right? Wouldn't you guys agree sine of theta is y over 1? Or we can just say sine of theta was just equal to y. Cosine of theta would just be equal to x over 1, which was just x. Yes? So another way to write this coordinate point, actually, and this is something we're going to come into later, but I figure I'll just throw it out there now. Another way we could write this coordinate point is cosine of theta, sine of theta. Again, we'll talk about that later. But I really want you guys to see, we first started talking about these as opposite over adjacents. Then we threw this on an xy axis, and we started talking about them as x and y's. Then we kind of threw them onto a unit circle where the hypotenuse is 1, where we said, all right, now let's make the hypotenuse 1. Then we could reference these as sines and cosines, like the lengths of those triangles or the lengths of these sides of triangles could be represented all three of these. We could, you know, interchangeable. So what that helps us with, guys, is a couple identities. Now, remember, when we're talking about identities, an identity is simply an equation where the left side is equal to the right side. And one of the easier identities I gave you guys was like this. 3 times 4 plus 1 equals 13. That is an identity. The left side is equal to the right side. And you guys would agree with me, right? OK, that's an identity. They don't look anything like each other, but we know that the left side is equal to the right side. We just have to do a little math in our head to get it done. So first set of identities is what we call the quotient identities. Mr. Yes, I don't know why I'm writing that twice. Mallory on her way? I'm sorry? Yes, Mallory Lunar? Yeah, she's in class. Yes, could you please send us to the front office? She's checking out. Okay. Thank you. Mallory, make sure you have the homework written down. That's on the board. So we know, guys, tangent. And let's think about all the different ways we've written tangent. We first started with tangent as opposite over adjacent, right? Then we moved to tangent as y over x, correct? And again, another thing, isn't, it not, isn't there nothing strange with us just saying, isn't tangent also just sine over cosine? Right? And that's equivalent. Sine of theta over cosine of theta. The left side is equal to the right side. That is what we call the quotient identity. One side is equal to the other. And we could do the same thing with cotangent. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite. X over Y, or cosine over sine. Cotangent of theta equals cosine of theta over sine of theta. OK? Yes, no, maybe so. Good. All right. Now let's go and look at the next set. Reciprocal. And again, these should be like common to you guys. You, these shouldn't really be uh, reciprocal identities. So the reciprocal identities, guys, is basically just saying, like, what else is like tangent equal to? Well, let's, can we set tangent equal to its reciprocal? And um, another way of like looking at that is like, remember, if you took tangent and multiply by its reciprocal, you're going to get 1. So the reciprocal, in this case, is what we call a multiplicative inverse. And we know that reciprocals, we know that tangent and cotangent are reciprocals of one another. So that means I could rewrite tangent is equal to 1 over cotangent of theta. And in the same regard, cotangent of theta is equal to 1 over tangent of theta. Do you guys agree with that? They're reciprocals of each other. And then we uh, remember the graphing. We looked at the graphs and the reciprocal of the graphs. So there's more, there's more functions that are reciprocals of one another. We have sine of theta is 1 over cosecant of theta. Cosecant of theta is 1 over sine of theta. Cosine of theta is 1 over secant of theta. 
And secant of theta equals 1 over do, 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 start cosine of theta. <sighs> These should be familiar to you. These shouldn't be like new things. I'm not saying you have them all memorized, but you should already have them written down, I think. I think we've already covered these. And you should at least be like, OK, yeah, we've, we've, I've done enough work in the last chapter and this chapter that that stuff makes sense. Now, the next one is very, very important and is going to be used probably as often as these. So these are your most common identities I'll put to the left. Now, again, uh, there's something I said. I said at the beginning, we could use our trig, but we could also use when we have a right triangle, we could also use the Pythagorean theorem, right? So we could do adjacent squared plus opposite squared equals hypotenuse squared. We could do x, we could do x squared plus y squared equals you know, hypotenuse, which we'd call like c squared, like a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? Or remember when we talked about cosine of theta is here? That's only when what? When the hypotenuse was 1. So couldn't we do cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta? equals 1. Does that make sense? Cosine squared, sine squared equals 1 squared, which is 1. And that is called the Pythagorean. So cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta equals 1. Now, please do not write this down, but I need you guys to understand this. We could rewrite this many, many different ways. You could also say, Please do not write this down. I mean, you can write this down, actually, I guess, if you want. But um, I'm going to erase it. Do you guys agree that's the same way as writing the exact same identity? Yes? And could I also do it like this? Sine squared of theta equals 1 minus cosine squared of theta. So I mean, if you want to write them down, that's fine. But you guys should be able to visualize that and say, oh, those are all exact same equations. Those are all identities. They're the exact same identity. I just manipulated them. Yes? OK, I just want everybody to feel comfortable with that. Oops, wrong one to erase. All right, so if I have an identity, as long as I do the same operation to both sides, I preserve that identity. This is an identity. As long as I add 1 using what we call the addition property of equality, my identity, wait a minute. I changed it, didn't I? There we go. As long as I subtracted 1 on both sides, I preserved my identity, correct? Yes? OK. That's kind of like what I did over there. I subtracted a cosine on both sides. Or you could divide by 3 on both sides, and your identity is preserved. Okay? So we could add or subtract on both sides, or we could multiply or divide. Well, I already showed you what happens when you subtract on both sides. You get different variations of the same identity. So let's look at what happens if we divide by something on both sides. Let's uh, divide by cosine, because I don't know. Why not? If you divide by cosine on both sides, Notice that this term is separated by addition, so you have to divide cosine into that and cosine into cosine into cosine and cosine into sine. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm dividing by cosine squared. So let's look at what we happen. Cosine squared divided by cosine squared of theta equals 1. Sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta equals tangent squared of theta. And 1 over cosine squared of theta is equal to secant squared. Oh, wow, look at that. That looks like another identity. 1 plus tangent squared of theta is equal to secant squared of theta. Okay, And then just imagine, let's divide them everything by sine. you OK, Harrison? Let's divide everything by sine. So this would be cosine over sine, which is? Cosine over sine is? 
cosine, if I was dividing this by sine instead of cosine, cosine over sine is cotangent. Sine over sine is 1. 1 over sine is co cosecant. So we could also say this as cotangent squared of theta plus 1 equals cosecant squared of theta. And those are three Pythagorean identities. I will tell you guys, you do not need to memorize those. Those will be provided to you on every assessment that you guys take from now on. Okay? However, you should be familiar with them enough that you probably don't need to look them up. But anyways, those will not be memorized. <coughs> All right. I can't say that for a fact on the other ones. Now, we've still got two more to go. Um, the next one is let's go and take a look at the cosine graph. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. That's roughly what cosine looks like. Would you agree with me, Sheldon? Yep. OK. So now, the main important thing, guys, that you need to remember about the cosine graph is that cosine graph is what we call an even function. The reason why we looked at an even function is reflective about the y-axis. Yes? No? And so it's reflective about the y-axis. Also, another thing was f of negative x is equal to um, f of negative x is equal to f of x. From chapter 1, if you guys remember, that was one of the rules we talked about. Now let's look at the, um, do I have room over here? I do. Remember that the graph is correlated to what the unit circle is, right? So let's think about this at pi over 4. If you look at pi over 4 here on the unit circle, the cosine is square root of 2 over 2, right? OK, so if we're looking there, it's a square root of 2 over 2. What about at negative pi over 4? What is that, negative pi over 4? What is that angle? So do you guys see that it doesn't matter whatever I get, whatever I plug in? Because f of pi over 4, if let's just say f of x, f of x equals cosine of x. Would you guys agree with me? f of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. And f of negative pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. They're the same. Yes? So that means that's an even function. That's very important. I'm going to come back to that in a second. Let's take a look at the odd function, one of the odd functions, which is sine. And if we look at sine, let's do the same thing. Let's look at pi over 4. Here's pi over 4 here. The answer, the y coordinate for pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. However, what's the y coordinate for negative pi over 4? Negative square root of 2 over 2, right? And it's the same thing, guys. You're looking here, that's a negative version, sorry. Right? So if you remember the definition of an odd function is f of negative x is equal to opposite f of x. So when something's even, if you have the negative version of that angle, it's still equal to the same value. Or if, it's, if you have a negative uh, input, it's now going to be equal to the opposite of the function. This is from chapter 1. So nothing new here. Now the only other function, the only other thing we want to determine is what else is even. We know cosine is. Do you remember what the other function was? It's related to cosine. It's its reciprocal, secant, right? Because again, remember guys, how do we find secant? You basically just make asymptotes at the intercepts, and then kind of like do these nice little parabola things here going towards the asymptotes. And you guys can see that that graph is also reflective about the y-axis, right? All right, so the next set is what we call the even-odd identities. And the even-odd identities, if you can So we have even, odd. So the even identities look like this. Cosine of negative x is equal to the cosine of x. Secant of negative x is equal to the secant of x. Why does that work? Again, guys, remember the definition of an even function. The, function, the f of a negative a, a value equals just f of the same value. That's why that works. And then for odd, 
f of negative x equals opposite f of x. Well, all the other functions are odd. So if I say sine of negative x, that's equal to negative sine of x. Cosine, I'm sorry, not cosine, tangent of negative x is equal to negative tangent of x. And um, cosecant of negative x is equal to negative cosecant of negative x. And cotangent of negative x is equal to negative cotangent of negative x. All right. Um, the last one, I don't have time because Bell is going to cut us off, but I want to write it down. And then after lunch, what I'll do is I'll show you guys on Desmos why this works. But let's just write it down before lunch. The last set is the co-function identities. Okay? And this is how they are related to each other. And I know it looks a little confusing, but again, I will go over this after lunch. Sine of pi halves minus x equals cosine of x. Um, so that means cosine of pi halves minus x equals sine of x. Tangent of pi halves minus x equals cotangent of x. And cotangent of pi halves minus x equals tangent of x. And the last one is cosecant of pi halves minus x equals secant of x. And secant of pi over x, pi halves minus x, equals cosecant of x. And again, I will explain that, why that works, how I, like I explained the other ones. I'll explain that when you guys get back from lunch.